in a landmark prosecution. A vineyard operation has been handed down, the largest ever fine for disturbing a wahitapu, or heritage site, at the Wairau Bar in Marlborough. The area is considered the most archaeologically significant in the country. But is enough being done to protect it? Mene Te Purongo, Amiriana Johnson. Te Pokohiwi o Kupe, the Wairau Bar, where the river meets the sea in Marlborough. One of the birthplaces of human civilization in Aotearoa. Keelan Walker spends much of his time out here. Photography and filmmaking is a passion for me but so is learning about our history here, learning about our stories. I realised a few years ago that the combination of the two, it's a powerful tool. Archaeological evidence shows early Polynesian ancestors arrived in the 1200s and made a home here. We don't have history books. Our history is embedded in the whenua and the names. And if I can capture that particular piece of land, and if I can encourage or inspire somebody to learn the story then behind that name, it's my way of helping to revitalise that story to preserve it. But this significant place is fighting for space with a billion dollar industry. A whopping 80% of all grapes harvested for wine in the country come from this region. And vineyards have grown five times the size in just two decades. I'm not against development. I'm not against growing wine. But I think it has to be done ethically, with respect, especially when there's wahitapu. Wahitapu, sacred land under threat. The area behind me was once a thriving path for the people of Rangitane here in the Waido. That was until the Battle of Kōwhai Pa, when Ngāti Toa invaded in the early 1800s. And that is just one of the reasons the iwi consider this site Wahitapu. This land has been the subject of an ugly and protracted court case. At the centre is vineyard owner Montford Corporation Limited, and the charge modifying a heritage protected site without an authority to do so. In March, the descendants of the land had their day in court. It never stopped being a wahitapu. It will never stop being a wahitapu because the blood of our tupuna, all of us here today, is in that soil. So I'm saddened, I'm embarrassed, and I'm angry about having to be here. The effects that it has had on our family and actually the wider iwi has been quite profound, both spiritually and culturally. And I do get a little bit sorry if I'm getting a bit emotional, fellas. You take your time. Pitting Fano against Fano. Suppression orders mean we can't name the company owner, but the bitter core is they are Māori. They're actually from the local iwi. It pains us to have to do this. I wish it wasn't our relation, but it happens to be our relation. Are the whānau remorseful? I come today and I don't see them. So I'm saddened that the only person I'm talking to is you, and you're not the guilty person. I wanted to come and appear and um, look the defendant in the eye to remind them that our values are their values. I don't know how that changed. They, they are our whānau. This is not the first time charges have been laid in regards to this whenua. The first incident was in 2014. Some of our whānau said, hey, there's some work taking place down there. And um, they weren't too happy about it. What works were going on? Uh, large areas of that particular site um, had been cleared by bulldozer. Old um, kumara pits and uh, old dwelling pits had been altered and um, filled in, and of course that was all in preparation of uh, vineyard development. How did you feel when you saw the site? Anger, frustration. We have almost felt helpless, really. What can we do, A, to prevent this from happening again, and B, more importantly, to stop it in its tracks at that point? A Heritage New Zealand investigation confirmed what Keelan already suspected. 
the whenua had been disturbed. Charges were dropped after the landowner made a $15,000 donation. But in 2019, the tractors rolled back in. They just went out and um, they started to develop again. Uh, no permit has been issued at this time. In fact, this land has the highest level of heritage protection, so almost all work must be signed off by Heritage New Zealand. The person knew or ought to know that actually they needed to get an archaeological authority and they chose not to do that. Investigators found a half a metre trench had been excavated. Archaeological remains such as oven stones and midden had also been exposed. But there is so much more to this place. You know, people were shot and buried there. We know that, given the scale of the battle, certainly there's blood in the soil. It's taken four and a half years for Fano to get justice. A small concession from Montford's defence lawyer, Miriam Radish. The defendant does acknowledge the views of the victims through its director and wishes to apologise for the distress that the offending has caused. Judge David Ruth brought down his judgment. This was, in my view, a deliberate act. Philip MacDonald was the person who the uh, corporate body now accepts uh, undertook the preparation work for the vineyard, knowing that there was no authority in place. This particular area that we're on... Philip MacDonald was a former director of Montford Corporation. Here he is in 2003 speaking to the Waitangi Tribunal. It's quite a big pass side, so I think that the cooking was done in this area. In the end, it was the company Montfort that had to pay up, a $55,000 fine. Were you satisfied about the outcome with the fine? No, not particularly. Um, doesn't feel quite right. The money doesn't matter. It's not about money for us. I think everyone, including our relations, are pleased to see the back of it. Because we wanted to show it was the country's archaeological authority, Heritage New Zealand, who brought the case. The $55,250 fine uh, is the largest imposed on a breach of archaeological authority in New Zealand. For that reason, we're reasonably pleased that it actually acknowledges the significance of this case. The highest penalty for this offence is $120,000. Are those penalties high enough, really, considering potentially how much money they make? Well, as an organisation, Heritage New Zealand, Pauri Tonga, we work within the law. The law sets the penalty. Uh, the fact that this was the most uh, highest uh, penalty imposed uh, does signify what New Zealand and the court system believe is abhorrent behaviour. The government body issues over 600 consents every year to allow people to modify an archaeological site. The thing about an archaeological authority is that often they're regarded to be bad because they stop works. Well, that's actually not true. The archaeological authority is actually designed to enable works to happen under conditions of protection. Why is it that the overall goal is to enable works to still take place? Well, I think overall the intention is to allow development whilst managing the importance of archaeology. How many prosecutions does Heritage New Zealand typically take, say, per year? Um, it's, it's less than 10. But many more developments could be going under the radar. I would say there are things happening on people's farms throughout the area daily. It's just that we don't hear about them. We are quite aware that not all development or all land that's being developed is subject to an authority. We know that a lot of it should be. People must contact Heritage New Zealand if they find anything they suspect predates the 1900s. It's so important because the history of New Zealand is deep and rich. If you look out of the window today, you won't see that deep and rich history because it's under the ground. And the reality is that the archaeological authority allows that story to be told. Just around the corner from the damaged Wahi Tapu is Puka Puka, a story unearthed. Kumara pits were discovered. They fenced it off. It's well kept. We've put po whenua in the ground. A successful preservation of an ancient site. And because of that, we are now able to visit those sites, educate the community, and continue telling the stories of our people from there. 
it's a really good tool. Keelan wants to see something similar at Corfi Par. Unlike a page in a book, we don't just go back and read it. We have to take people to these places and have them share them with us. This is our cultural identity.